So uh, this is the third video uh, in the introduction to the finite difference time domain method or the FTTD method. I'm Shanhui Fan from Flex Compute. In our previous video, uh, we have looked at uh, using FTTD method to compute the transmission uh, through a uniform dielectric slab. In this video, we are going to do a more complex structure of a transmission through a photonic crystal slab. The structure is shown here on the left. It consists of a high index dielectric slab with a periodic array of air holes introduced into the slab. So uh, the geometric parameters are provided below here. Uh, the period is set to be one micron and then uh, the radius is 200 nanometer and the thickness is 550 nanometer. The permittivity of the slab uh, is 12, which roughly corresponds to silicon in the infrared wavelength range. And we would be interested in computing the transmission spectrum uh, of light normally instant upon the slab. So on the right here is the computed transmission spectrum and uh, uh, the spectrum consists of a smoothly varying background with two resonant features uh, near uh, 115 and 120 terahertz, where the transmission vary very sharply from one to zero over a narrow frequency ranges. Um, the detailed physics of these transmission spectrum uh, associated with this transmission spectrum, if you are interested, uh, you can take a look at this reference. Here, we're gonna focus primarily on the uh, FTTD setup that allow you to get such transmission spectrum. But uh, the thing that we would need and we would need to highlight is the fact that if you look at the transmission spectrum, there are these two very strong resonant features. And uh, the, uh, our video will focus, in fact, on some of the consideration of using FTTD method when you try to study systems that support strongly resonant, uh, strong optical resonances. So uh, let's start. Uh, in the, uh, as a first step, we'll need to set up the computational cell. So uh, here we're considering a structure that's infinitely periodic in the XY plan. And so uh, as is typical, we're gonna choose the computational domain to be only a single unit cell of this infinitely periodic structure. So this is how the computational domain look like. Uh, at the middle here uh, is a single unit cell of the structure. On top and bottom here, we put in a perfectly matched layer boundary condition uh, that are used to uh, absorb an uh, incident wave. And then on the side here, we put in a periodic boundary condition to simulate a infinitely uh, periodic structure. And uh, uh, we excite a plane wave instant upon the structure with a plane wave source and we assume an x polarized uh, current to generate x polarized instant wave. And we look at the transmitted field by looking at the flux and the field on the other side of the structure. And we choose the discretization to be sufficiently small to resolve both the structural feature and the wavelengths inside the material. So these are actually pretty standard uh, if you recall what we have discussed in the second video. In general, one nice aspect about FTTD is that many of the consideration that you have in simulate more complex structure are in fact very similar to the consideration that you have in simulating simple structures. So uh, with this, we can uh, put in a source and the source, uh, what we hear is a, a plane wave source uh, and uh, with a uh, Gaussian envelope. And we choose in this case, a relatively uh, short pulse so that we can produce a broadband spectrum 
covering the frequency range from 80 uh, to approximately 130 terahertz. And uh, with this, uh, we run two simulations. Uh, one is uh, without the photonic crystal slab, and that produce the blue curve here, and that give a characterization of the incident wave spectrum. We then put the photonic crystal slab in, and that produce the red spectrum here on the top, and that's the amplitude of the transmitted wave. We then take the ratio between uh, the spectrum with and without the photonic crystal slab. And that gives you the nice transmission spectrum at the bottom, uh, which is the spectrum that we show in the very beginning uh, of this uh, tutorial. Now, one very important consideration in simulating systems with highly resonant features is that you will need to run the simulation long enough. And uh, 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 to illustrate this point, uh, on the top here, I'm showing the time evolution of field, the electric field along the X direction uh, at a monitor point on the blue plane on the left. And uh, what you can see here in the, this time trajectory uh, is that you have an initial pulse passing through the structure uh, indicated, for example, by the time duration A here. So below in A, you show EX as a function of time for that short period. You can see the initial pulse with a long tail that's generated afterwards. And you can see that this long tail extends to very, very far all the way to a few picoseconds. And uh, uh, in the time uh, slot B here, as indicated here, uh, we again, at the bottom here, we plot the EX as a function of time. And you can see the exponential decay and overlay on top of it, a beating pattern. Now, if you recall, we have two resonant features here. So these resonant features have slightly different frequencies. And the beating pattern here is related to the frequency difference uh, between these two resonances. So uh, as I have mentioned, uh, in obtaining the nice looking spectrum on the right, we run the simulation to a time of about six picoseconds so that all the amplitude in the resonance essentially decay to zero. In other words, we choose the computational time duration to be uh, significantly longer than the resonant lifetime of the system. And if we do that, we can get a nice transmission spectrum. On the other hand, uh, if you don't run the simulation long enough, you won't get the desired result. So uh, here's an example where instead, we only do the Fourier transform over a simulation time of 0.56 picosecond correspond to the blue brace on the left. In this time duration, the initial pulse has passed. And also we capture part of the exponential decay of the resonance. However, the amplitude of the resonance has not decayed to zero. If that's the duration that you choose, then you obtain a spectrum as indicated on the right. It somewhat resembles the spectrum that I show you in previous slides. However, on one hand, you see that the resonance meter gets more smoothed. And in particular, you do not see this sharp transition from one to zero over a narrow frequency range. The one and the zero there, in fact, is uh, required by energy cons uh, conservation consideration. If you, uh, as you can see, like the theory paper that I have uh, pointed out to you. Uh, so uh, here you can see that you don't get either zero or one. And that comes about because we do not fully capture the energy in the exponential decay of the resonance. The other thing that you see in this spectrum is there are lots of oscillations coming, uh, uh, lots of oscillations away from where the resonance is. Uh, 
These oscillations come from the fact we truncate the time series before the field amplitude goes to zero, and the Gibbs phenomena then give you a broad spectrum perturbance. So to summarize uh, this main lesson here, to get the nice looking spectrum that we see here that faithfully capture the physics of the structure, you will need to run the simulation to be longer, significantly longer than the rest and lifetime of the system. Now, having obtained a spectrum like this, uh, typically one will gain further insight on the resonant behavior of the system. And in particular, then one would like to be able to visualize how the field of one of the resonance look like. So uh, in FTTD, this is actually straightforwardly done. So uh, instead of using a broadband spectrum of a source to excite the system, as we have done previously, uh, what you can do is you choose a narrow band uh, spectrum, so a much longer pulse uh, in the dipole source. And in our case, we'll show an example where we try to uh, study a bit more of the first resonance uh, peak near uh, 115 terahertz. So we choose a source spectrum indicated by the blue curve here. And again, on the right, I'm plotting the uh, EX field at the monitor point as a function of time. Again, you see an initial pulse now actually much longer than the previous example and therefore generate a narrow band spectrum as well as the exponential decay of the resonance. In this case, you see a pure exponential decay without the beating pattern that we've seen in the previous example. And uh, uh, this comes about because now we selectively excite only one resonance. So uh, having generated such a uh, field uh, as a function of time plot, you can then select a particular time uh, duration during which the system is going through pure exponential decay. For example, we can select the time duration as roughly indicated by the blue brace there. And at that time duration, you can then take a look at how the field distribution look like. Since you are in the time where the system is going through pure exponential decay now, it gave you a sense of how the resonance look like. So uh, here I'm plotting the, the EX field on the slice as indicated by the vertical yellow looking slice indicated in the computational domain. Uh, this slice cuts through the structure. So on the right, uh, the two uh, uh, green rectangle correspond to the dielectric region and in between is the air hole. So you can see that inside the dielectric structure, the field is not uniform and is strongly enhanced compared with outside. And that is the resonant feature. Once you go outside the slab on the Z direction, on the other hand, you can see that the field very quickly become uniform along the X direction. This comes about because we're in the non-diffracting regime. And therefore, once you go sufficiently away from the structure, you only get plane wave. And uh, uh, this is a field plot, but you can also generate a uh, movie. So uh, in the movie, you can see that in the structure, the field oscillates back and forth, and then it produces a pure plane wave radiating out uh, outside the structure. Uh, so to end the video, uh, let me just briefly comment that FTTD in fact is a very nice method for studying systems with high quality factor resonance or with long lifetime resonance. In the long time, when you run the structure long enough after a pulse excitation, the behavior of the structure is dominated by the high Q resonance. 
Therefore, you can always excite high Q resonance as long as your source has some spectral overlap with the high Q resonance. And this is in contrast to many of the frequency domain method where to excite high Q resonance, you have to choose your excitation frequency very, very precisely. So uh, to summarize, I give you uh, some of the consideration on using FTTD method to simulate structures uh, with high quality factor or long lifetime resonance. Uh, thank you for watching this video.